Elastic Beanstalk AWS Elastic Beanstalk is an AWS managed service that allows you to upload the code of your web application along with the environment configurations, which will then allow Elastic Beanstalk to automatically provision and deploy the appropriate and necessary resources required within AWS to make the web application operational. These resources can include other AWS services and features such as EC2, auto scaling, application health monitoring, and elastic load balancing, in addition to capacity provisioning. This automation and simplification makes it an ideal service for engineers who may not have the familiarity or the necessary skills within AWS to deploy, provision, monitor, and scale the correct environment themselves to run the deployed applications. Instead, this responsibility is passed on to AWS Elastic Beanstalk to deploy the correct infrastructure to run the uploaded code. This provides a simple, effective, and quick solution to deploying your web applications. The supported development options for Elastic Beanstalk for deploying your web applications include Java, .NET, Node.js, PHP, Ruby, Python, Go, and Docker. So it can be said that Elastic Beanstalk handles the provisioning of your infrastructure, including load balancing, auto-scaling, and application health monitoring. It also takes care of the application platform needed to run your code, including the installation and management of your application stack, as well as patching and updates to your operating system and the application platform. And the great thing is that you are still in control of everything so you can still have complete administrative control of the AWS resources. There are no additional charges for using Beanstalk. You only pay for the resources that you create. So in order to get started, you need to click on Create Application, and you will land onto this web page over here. So let's get started and create our first web app. So I will name this application as ScoreKeep. So we will name it as ScoreKeep over here. And then moving on, you need to give an option. You have an option for application tags. We will leave it for now. And then you need to give the environment information. So environment information is by default the same name that you keep for that. So it's by default score keep dash env. The next thing you need to choose is the platform. So right now, as you can see over here, we have all of these platforms as we discussed previously. So we will go ahead and use the Java platform for now. And the application that I have right now is a game application, which is a tic-tac-toe game. And that is built on Java 8. So even though it is depreciated, but it will run for now. So I will just select this Java 8. And then you have the recommended version 2.11.18. So I will just select this one. Now for the application code, you have two options. Either you go ahead with the sample application or you can upload your own code. So right now I will go to the upload your code option and then upload a file over here. So you can either upload a local file from your PC or you can also upload a code that is resting on a public S3 URL as well. So let me just choose a file and select this from my local PC. So here is the application that I have for now. I will just select this application and wait for it to be uploaded. So the file is successfully uploaded. From here, you can go and create the application and you also have the option to configure more options. So let's just go into this configure more options. So here we have the platform. If you want, you can either change the platform from here. Then we have the software. So we have Amazon X-Ray and it is disabled for now. So I will go ahead and enable it as we want our X-Ray to be enabled. Just save this setting for now, keeping rest of the things as default. Then you have the instances. So you can either select a single instance or you can go for multiple instances depending upon the users that will be using your web application. So right now we have the default container and that is a single instance. So moving on, then we have the capacity. So if you are using multiple instances, then obviously you want that to be managed. So for that, you have load balancers as well. Moving on further, you can see that we have the rolling updates and deployment. So if you want your application to be updated by default whenever you update it in your S3 bucket, so you can go for this option. 
and then we have the security option which is an important one so if i just go to the security you can see that there is a service role that is for your elastic bean in stock itself and then there is a role that is for your instance that will be created so what happens is whenever you create a web app with the help of elastic bean in stock and you go ahead to deploy it and create your first web application so it first of all creates an ec2 instance and your application is basically deployed on that particular ec2 instance and launched onto that ec2 instance so these are the options that you see for virtual machine permissions and the role that this instance will use is aws elastic bean in stock ec2 role so right now if i go ahead and create this web application it won't run because it does not have sufficient permissions to run right now so the first thing before you create your first web application with elastic bean in stock you need to go to the iam service so just like i am doing over here you will go to the iam service and inside the iam services you need to go to the roles right now you can see over here that we have these two roles aws elastic bean in stock ec2 role so this is the role that will be used by that particular ec2 instance to launch your web application and this is the aws elastic bean in stock service role so we don't need to worry about this role right now we will go to the ec2 role for the elastic bean in stock and over here right now you can see that these are the three permissions that are attached by default so we need to add some more permissions so for that we will go to the add permission attach policies and the first policy that i need to attach is aws x-ray so i will look for aws x-ray full access so here it is so this is because this ec2 instance is able to leave its traces so that that can be you know traced by x-ray service in aws and then we can see like whatever is happening with this particular application and then you need to give the s3 full access so for that i will search for s3 and here you can see that we have the amazon s3 full access the next thing is the amazon dynamo db because we will be creating a dynamo db table for our users databases that are playing this game so for that i will give amazon dynamo db full access and the last one is sns full access so that we can get all of the notifications that are required to be prompted and delivered to the user so for that i will go ahead and select the amazon sns full access so now all of these policies that are required are attached we can go ahead and attach the policies and now you can see that the policies have been successfully attached to this role now we will go back over here and just refresh it so now you can see the same role is over here and this same role will be used by this service role so let's save it and then you have the monitoring option so that you can actually you know monitor for your health of this ec2 instance on which your web application is running manage your updates your notifications and then you have the networking option either you want it to be a part of a vpc or you know private applications that are running within a particular subnet or you want it to be public then you can also manage your databases and your tags so we will keep the rest of these things as default and create this application so let's wait for it so that the environment is created meanwhile let me just show you one thing if i just go to the aws services and if i go here and see, look for the ec2 services so here you can see if i go to the instances running you will find that there are no instances as of now and these are the instances that are currently over here in my account and all of them are stopped so once when this environment is created and we will see that when our application is launched you will notice that there will be an, an ec2 instance that is launched over here and that ec2 instance will be the one on which our web application is launched so let's wait for this elastic bean in stock to create all of our environment and make our web application running and you can also see over here that it has started from creating a security group with this name then the auto scaling launch configuration is this name over here the auto scaling group name then it waits for the ec2 instances to launch then there is a scaling group policy that is created for this web application and then you can see all of these things that are being created so whenever we are using elastic bean in stock to launch our applications in either of the languages that we just saw 
we don't need to worry about creating all the environment ourselves so elastic bin stock as you can see creates all of the necessary environments and the platforms that you require to run your web application by its own so now we can see that an instance was added with this name over here to our environment and if i just go over here and refresh it and you can also see that this score keep environment is also created over here and it is running right now and is in the initializing stage with a t2 micro which is a free tier so this is what we selected at the time of creating this web application if you are interested in selecting another instance type you can also go for another instance type but keep in mind that for the free tier t2 micro is the one that you need to select else you will have to pay extra charges for the instances that you select so let's wait for it to create some more environments for us so that the application is up and running and now we can see that our web application is launched so the health is okay for the environment and the running version is a score keep dash source so if you want you can either go ahead and upload and deploy a new version of your application as well so now the question is how can we launch this application so for that you can see that it provides you a link over here so you just need to click on this link and here you can see that we have the application up and running so what we will do is we will go ahead and give a username so let this username be shweb over here and let this session name be game1 and the session id can be anything so let's name it as 0 game001 and let's join it so let the game name be tic tac toe create the game and now click on play so now here is the game and you can see the username being displayed over here as well and now you can see that you can actually play this game over here so here as you can see that this game can be played as usual and now as this as user have won so basically it won't allow me to again add any of the inputs as of now so you can see that it, it says zero wins and by the way you can also have multiplayer as well so whatever the game traces that are being generated for this web application can be traced with the help of x-ray service so for that if you just go to the view traces for this game and you can see all the activities that that were being generated by this user so put get post and all those activities that are being performed inside the dynamo db and then you can see that we have the average response time for each of the url that were being clicked and launched and there is another option as well which which shows you the service map so in the service map it basically shows you a graph for your complete traces for this web application and here we can see that we have our service graph for this x-ray so let me just zoom in so here you can see that we have all of the services that are attached to this web application so we have the sns service we have the environment for the elastic bin stock and then you can see that we have the score keep session which is actually the dynamo db table and these are all the tables over where the user data keeps going in and then it tracks like whatever the data is being recorded either it is being put in or it is being retrieved out of the table so all in all it basically is helpful in identifying you the bottlenecks the latency spikes as you can see and it also gives you an information about other issues to solve to improve the performance of your application so if you just go to this sns and you can see over here that we have this yellow cursor over here so if i just go to this and click on it so you will see that it shows an error of 20% So let's first see what SNS error has to say about. So if we click on the error and if we view the traces, so it only shows you the error trace over here. And if you go to the particular trace, so it is computing the map, and you can see over here that there is one request that is actually creating the error for us. In order to see that error, we will select on this SNS service and go to the exceptions. And now you can see over here that this is the actual message. which is producing this error so the error is actually that the email address is not set and you can also see it gives it as an invalid parameter so if we just go back to our elastic bin stock configurations and just configure this email address so this error will disappear all in all so let me just do it quickly for you so i will go to the elastic bin stock dashboard and in here if you see you will find an option for the configuration so just go to the configuration option 
moving below you will find the option for notifications so over here you can see that the notifications is over here and this is the email and it gives us a correct error that no email was mentioned so basically it didn't knew that where to send the notifications using the sns service so if we just quickly go to the edit and if i type down my email id and click on apply so it will save the configuration changes and it will move back and restart our environment and in the same time let me just show you i have also received this notification so i will just go here and confirm my subscription as well now once this subscription is confirmed it will go ahead and it will rerun this environment for us and then you will see that once when we run it again that error will be disappeared all right so it is up and running again so i will just refresh it i will move back to my service and just give a session a random session so username can be shweb game 01 and session id can also be game 001 just create and join it game name is game 1 rule is tic tac toe and then create this game and this plate so i will just play it randomly so now you can see it says that o wins and if you just look at the service map for this so now you can see that there is no error over here this is because the notification service did not had email previously and now we have assigned the email in the same way you can also look for the errors that appear for your particular application in excel services so with this i hope you have got an understanding of how you can deploy your application with any language that elastic beanstalk supports how you can deploy it and how you can run it with the help of elastic beanstalk environment and then in addition to that how you can use excel service to look at the traces for your application and with the help of that you can remove your bottlenecks for your application and improve your web application running over the internet